We are here with Joe, and you got to tell the world what your background is. Uh, sure. My name's Guillaume. I'm an employee at IBM. Uh, my specialty is business intelligence and a bit of analytics. Uh, I've been doing it for four years now, and before that I was a consulting in the negotiation strategy for another four or five years before that. Yeah. Guillaume was telling me that his new role is in business intelligence, mm -hmm. and I'd love to learn more about your world and what's happening there now. Sure. Uh, so at IBM, we have an internal tool called Cognos. Yeah. It's built for reporting, dashboards, telling the story behind all the data. Yeah. It's great to say we have big data, lots mm -hmm. of things, but if, it, if it's just a big table, it doesn't mean anything to anyone. Right. Um, we have our own internal tool. We've seen a trend lately where a lot of people are picking up Power BI, which is the Microsoft version of it. Yeah. Uh, and this isn't some sort of internal struggle between applications, which one's better. It's simply, what does the client want? We'll give it to them. Yeah. So they put me as software lead for Quebec for Power BI. Cool. Um, I just happens to be where the two applications have two different mentalities, if you will. Yeah. Whereas who holds the modifying power? I happen to agree with the, the Power BI one more than Cognos, so I guess I'm in a good place right now. There you go, exactly. So the question then is around um, if you're hiring people for your team, what are you looking for uh, with their technical expertise as well as their kind of business sense? Um, are you looking more on the technical side, on the business side, both? Um, for me personally, for the Power BI team, not so much technical. Uh, I feel like a lot of those can be learned fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, after doing it for a couple of years now, I also have a um, wide variety of different trainings and I can pick out and choose, all right, well, you need to work on that, right, so I'll send right. you that instead. Uh, do need some understanding, not necessarily of coding, but uh, Power BI uses a uh, Microsoft language called DAX, okay. which is the same thing as in Excel in uh, their SQL yeah. management servers. Mm -hmm. So having an understanding of that, or at least an understanding of how coding somewhat works, yeah, it's, it ends up being an equation, like in Excel, mm -hmm. but that, that also helps. In terms of business sense, yeah. uh, I think the most important thing is understanding of your client's situation. Okay. Uh, I mean, I've had, when I started projects where they give you a whole bunch of data and you, it, they tell you what it's supposed to tell, to tell them, and you can't really counteract that. Like, right, no, right, here's right. what we found instead. Mm -hmm. Because at, at the end of the day, that's your added value to them hiring you, is you should be telling them new things they haven't thought of before. Right, right, right. So understanding of the client situation and um, just in general idea of how to wade through lots and lots of unrefined, unmanaged data. Dirty data. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So um, we were talking a while ago uh, about uh, storytelling and that capability and how do you test for that how do you identify that people actually know how to do this the only thing you can really do is test them in a real-life scenario give them some data sets yeah. and ask them like here give me maybe a two-pager on what you think this tells us give me some insights on what's inside there's no real way of trying it as, uh, of uh, training for it as much as just doing it right 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 I mean, unless you have, if you ever you find a training for it, let me know. I'd love to see that. <laughs> We're building one, let me tell you. No. <laughs> so, I'm looking forward to seeing that. He gets to be a professor in our school. Uh, <laughs> and I just hired him on the spot. Now, <laughs> it's all right. I'm st plus, I'm still a student. Exactly. I'm still taking classes. So. There you go. Why not? Why, why would I stop? I mean, it's continuous improvement. Why not? <laughs> um, now, with regard to your own journey to where you are, um, you have quite a bit of a kind of rich experience. Maybe you could share a little bit about you know, how you got to IBM and this sure. wonderful role you're at. Sure, um, so when I was when I turned 18, I decided to prioritize work experience over school. Okay. Uh, I was at a place in my life where I didn't know what I wanted to do exactly, mm -hmm. so just pigeonholing myself to one specific major felt just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. So I went to work for a language school in Quebec City as just doing administrative work. Yeah. Uh, some HR, some finance, just a bit of everything, kind of get to know. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, I took a, I did a certificate, like a, yeah, a one-year degree in English literature. Wow. Which is actually how I 
got to start writing and yeah. uh, the book. And um, after that, I, I have one certificate. I could do three to do a bachelor's, <laughs> I guess. Why not? <laughs> Why not, exactly. <laughs> but at the time, the main challenge was actually... I, so I go to school at uh, Laval University yeah. in Quebec City. All in French, right. which is why I took English Lit, because it was easy for me. I, I was just coming back from Chicago, so very wow. much English sharing right. And even though I was born here, I spent 14 years without using my French, so I lost right. a lot of it written down. Speaking, still okay. Right, right. Uh, so I did that for a few years, working as an administrative, all around, sort of jack of all trades, yeah. um, until I was let go because the company was downsizing. Mm -hmm. And one of our old clients who was there regularly, who kept mm -hmm. seeing me in my role, just mm -hmm. she'd come in early and just chat, said, hey, I need someone for my company. And I became uh, sort of a consultant slash simulation technician, right. where we did what I was talking about earlier, which is uh, strategy negotiation consultant. Right. Uh, companies would hire us to train and help their staff on tough negotiation uh, situations yeah. uh, so it's a lot of strategies it's a lot of psychology behind the need of the client it's a whole lot of simulations where clients have to deal with harassment racism insults attacks mm -hmm. uh, threats the works right right I did that for four years while I worked on a second certificate in uh, information systems, oh, cool. so information architecture, which is actually what I'm doing now. Yeah. I just finished a mandate doing that for four uh, for four months, and that's it's my go-to thing. I love it. I love Good. I love the architecture behind the systems, and in the meantime, finishing up some stuff on the side, just administration, like uh, microeconomy, just stuff like that. Right, right. Okay. But uh, I've been so I've been in school for ten years now. Oh my goodness! And I was a consulting, uh, negotiation consulting. Yeah. Uh, back in 2000, early 2014, where I was told there was a couple of openings here at IBM, uh, I applied, and here I am, really. There you go. All right, so Jerome uh, actually created this book, which I will post down below somewhere, and he gets to tell us a little bit about uh, what the book is about. Sure. Um, so back when I was a negotiation consultant, me and my old mentor, Agat, along with uh, Lorraine, who was client side, but she was responsible for hiring us for one of our major clients. Yeah. We decided that we, we've always wanted to put down into words everything we've been doing, except reading a book that says, step one, reformulate yeah. your vis-a-vis. -vis. <laughs> step two, state your position, is boring. Right. Nobody wants to read that. Exactly. So instead, what we did is we wrote a novel. It's, it's a short novel, about 150 pages. Uh, four characters go through maybe not mundane, but real life situations yeah. where they get to learn the technique, the basis of the techniques right. through their situation. And those are situations easily applicable to everyday life. Uh, the first book is, is called At Work, the subtitle, because it's basically at work relations. Mm -hmm. uh, the one we just finished is for out of court settlements. Wow. Um, and this is not to poo poo on lawyers at all. Please don't take it that way. <laughs> but we we're trying to offer a different venue of solution for situations where you have a, a potential lawsuit because I, I don't know how it is for the rest of Canada but in Quebec the court system is currently over engorged it is you can wait years before seeing a lawyer for a lawsuit for ten thousand dollars is it really worth it to go wow. through all that trouble so maybe there's a negotiation situation there that can help you out Make it and next year I'm starting book number three which is actually uh, on the gambling craze or psychology behind that yeah because my part of our job as negotiation consultant was a lot of casino uh, yeah. projects and I mean I'm I spent so much time in Vegas so I mean it's, it's an excuse love. to go to Vegas absolutely Let me 100 percent 100 percent so but are the characters the same across all the... They are not. Oh, they okay. are not. There is one overarching character. Right. Uh, his name is Joe. He's the one that provides weird technology to enable them to learn yeah, those yeah. techniques. He's a kooky old character, but he's the oh, one that brings all the books together. Very cool. So I'll look forward to that. Link back here, down below. Okay. Um, so maybe some final words on... Um, your thoughts around the challenges in our business right now with big data being uh, not a fad but here Absolutely. and what are we going to do with that and you know how do we address it as as leaders in this environment of constant data um, well the, in a real case the 
most the biggest problem I've seen so far is companies having lots and lots of really great data, mm-hmm. and I'm sure it would tell you a great story if it was cleansed in some way, right. and that's the problem. Like I had a client a few years ago who wanted us to do predictive maintenance on something, except gave us gigabytes of Excel data. All of it was just free uh, free form. Oh my god. It is, and unfortunately, I'm sorry, IBM, but we don't have a machine that takes in all your data and just cleans it magically. Right. We have people who do that. It's long and it's tedious. Um, and it's expensive. Yes, yes, that it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's one of the major problems. The second problem is uh, I feel like companies work in silos too much where you don't talk to each other and you have no idea what the others are doing and that causes problems. I just had one example where they had no idea who was responsible for creating new entries in, let's say, uh, vendor Mm -hmm. database. So at the end of the day, you check inside, you're like, oh, someone created it five different times because five different people thought they were the ones supposed to do it. Yeah. And that's the problem because everybody looks for different slices of the data but it's the same data yeah. now you have to figure out which one is actually the golden important. record and that's where you get that's why data governance is so important right, right, right. and that's, what is data governance for our folks sure uh, <laughs> it's something you really really should be doing in your enterprises who owns the data who is responsible for it um, if let's say you have a project for a new application for your sales you need to know who handles the golden record for customers you don't need 20 people modifying that data all the time. You need someone to say, okay, this is what you're doing with that data. Let's say you're putting it in Oracle or SAP right. or whatever. Okay, you're touching these fields. I know exactly who handles this one, this one, this one, and this is what you can and can't do with right. it. Right. Right. To avoid duplicates, to avoid erroneous information, to avoid a whole bunch of problems down the line. So. Very good. All right, well, thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. See you soon. Thank you.